Hello, beautiful people. Subscribers, people who watch videos. I don't know. So I've, it's been suggested I should come up with some kind of cutesy name for you. I don't really feel the need to do that. You're just, you're just a beautiful people. I've done some work while I was not recording. Uh, it's It would be ridiculous to attempt to record all of the fine-tuning that's gone into this project. Um, because really, it's hours and hours and hours of the fiddly little details. I believe I'm going to use this kind of a template going forward. As a, uh, I will record, uh, you know, blocking out the bit, the large major changes and the the the, uh, the basics of, of a design for any vehicle that, that I'm putting together in this game. But yeah, we're not going to attempt to record all of the tiny little fiddly details that are necessary to finally get this thing to work. It works now. Okay, here is Grunt. This is the new Grunt. Uh, we added a couple more boosters. I redesigned the tail to give it more pitch authority. We've got uh, some of these stronger elevators back here. We've gone to the uh, the larger, stronger RCS ports. We've uh, spaced them out farther away. We've got a couple more back here. Uh, spaced the RCS ports out farther away from center of gravity. Give it more uh, pitch and roll and yaw authority that way. We've got, oh, wait a second, that's right. I need to remove those. I had an idea that I was going to reinforce the landing gear by putting doing two of them, but actually in testing, it turns out that only one of these ever actually contacts the ground anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm still stuck waiting. Attention Kerbal Space Program modders, we need more landing gear. Uh, I did something which I originally I didn't really want to do because I thought it would be adding unnecessary weight and unnecessary complication to the design, but it turns out it is necessary. I added a jet engine, two jet engines to Grunt, uh, simply because the uh, the vehicle it's so heavy that it really needs to have a, a means. These these the only reason these engines are here is to give me more control whenever I'm landing the thing. I need to be able to add power and vary the thrust in order to uh, very, very gently send Grunt down because it really likes to explode. But there it is, a cobweb of struts. These tanks right here, this is standing in. This, this tank is 20 KMUs. This is 20, and that's five. So there, that's 45 KMUs of mass. I've stuck to the nose of this thing. So right now we're going to do a full operational test of Grunt. I'm going to save that since I took those extraneous landing gear off of there. Yeah, oh yeah, also, yeah, we've got the, the larger fuel tanks and the, the larger engines, which that's the... Uh, I gather some people, maybe you didn't realize that that's the whole point of designing things this way is that I can uh, swap out. Maybe I can put, you know, if I have a light payload, I can put a small fuel tank in a smaller engine, you know, heavy, a heavy payload, large fuel tank, large engine. That said, I believe that with the weight, this 45 KMUs that I've stuck on there, we're approaching the limit of what this design is going to be able to do. Start as I continue to stack on more more mass of more more fuel tanks and more engines while sticking to the design goal of not uh, not disposing any parts. I want the entire vehicle to be reusable. Okay, enough blather, enough talking. Let's fly it. <laughs> Here we go. Harv Kerman. I don't know if there's any relation to Harvester Kerman of, of squad fame, uh, but there he is. Harv Kerman, Herbert Kerman, and Sally Kerman. It's, it's interesting to me. Sometimes we have different spellings of Kerman. All right, let's retract that landing gear. Uh, precision control is on. SAS is on. I am. I'm, I'm excited. I'm ex I've, I've already done some test flights. I'm confident that this will work. It's still, it's tricky, but yeah, let's, let's do it. There's the mains. There's the solids. And we are burning. Here the jet engines working there also. They're adding just a little bit of kind of really as far as the size of this vehicle is concerned. That amount of thrust I get out of those turbines is uh, almost negligible. But, you know, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Nicely smooth takeoff. You can see the SAS on, see all those control surfaces flapping away. I 
I suppose it would make more sense if I was going for maximum efficiency to redesign this thing where I would, say, dispose of these solid rocket boosters after I use them, but I just, really, I just, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I want to keep using them. I, I'm imagining that this thing is going to land the whole thing. I'm going to refuel the liquid engines, going to repack all the fuel into the solid engines, and we're going to reuse the entire vehicle. That's my goal. Okay. Solids are done. Let's pitch forward just a little bit. Uh, climbing high enough. Let's kill those jets, as those are no longer useful. Pitch forward a little bit more. Let's turn RCS on at this point, getting me some more control. After the problems I was having with my joystick, I think maybe some of the uh, the pots in my joystick are, are falling apart or something. I need to open it up and clean it out or something. But anyway, doing with the keyboard. We have very, very peaceful launching and orbiting music now. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, it likes to roll, so the, the challenge is to, to keep the nose pointed. It's okay if it rolls. You know, the challenge is just to keep the nose pointed on the on the 90 degree line here, and just let it roll however it wants to. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn SAS on right there. Let's hold about that point for right now. Yeah, look at all those RCS jets all over the place. <laughs> okay, here we go. How much fuel? Yeah, still, we've already gone through the, the upper and lower tanks, and now it's just uh, burning those the monster fuel tanks on the pylons. Yeah, this is this is working. It's going smooth. Right about here. We've already demonstrated. See, the target all along has been 70 kilometers, but even 60 kilometers is good enough. We've already demonstrated that for the purposes of launching a payload. Decoupling it from a payload, and the payload's engines will take it into orbit from there. Still, I can angle this a little bit. Let's get a little bit higher. Okay. Ooh. There we go. And we're out of fuel. Okay, Apoaps is 67 kilometers. Our projected path is slightly past this still unnamed isthmus of land where I want to, to come down. Uh, tumbling, I did not. I wanted to have a little bit more control than that. Yeah, this fuel, those are the jet engines. They have their own independent fuel supply. So let's decouple. We'll just get rid of that heavy test load there. Let's thrust backwards, try and clear some with the RCS, try and clear that thing. That was one point that I actually wish that I had been recording whenever I was doing all, all the, the fine-tuning and testing is one time the, the test load actually... Uh, while while I was fighting the vehicle through re-entry, the test load came and collided with my vehicle. Collided with Grunt. It was very sad. It was hilarious and sad at the same time. <laughs> okay. Let's get that nose pointed in the direction of travel. And let's see if we can roll around. Let's put the blue side up. Those airplanes usually work better that way. And so if this were not just an inner test load at this point, they would be, um, yeah, they'd be, they'd be boost, that payload would be boosting itself into, into orbit. And that's all the RCS fuel. But we still have some slight control just by using, um, using the, the, the force that the, the cockpit itself exerts on the vehicle. It's got reaction wheels and gyroscopes in there. I imagine some of you are cussing at me right now about about the still having precision control on. I think that's because you do not understand how the precision control works. It still pushes exactly as hard. Um, you see, if you're if it's got full deflection there, the the cockpit is putting in every bit as much force 
as it would be if I did not have the precision control on. The difference is how quickly it applies it, how smoothly it applies it. It really is, it's, it's, um, see, you go to non-precision control, put you down, and the control goes down there just like half a second. Uh, and if you go to precision control, pitch down, the control moves in about a quarter. Uh, like, anyway, I said that backwards. <laughs> it takes, it moves slower, which means it's more precise. Come on, guys, can we get that nose down, please? Okay, here we go. Nose is starting to pitch down. Where's that payload? Oh, it's way down there. Okay. Okay, nose starting to come down. This is good. Very, very good. Makes me happy. Okay, now I'm trying to pitch back the other way in anticipation so I don't go too far. Uh, we're okay. We're approaching 30 kilometers. At this point, I'm going to turn my jet engines back on. So because... When we hit some of this buffeting, I may be kind of busy later. I'm going to go ahead and set my trim. Let's put it about a little less than a quarter way back. So I'm starting to hit some slight buffeting now. We're starting to catch just the very slightly thicker air. Buffeting usually starts to smooth out once you get down past, say, 15 kilometers or so. Okay. Whoops, whoa. <laughs> yeah, trying to maneuver very, very thin air. All right, throttle up some to get us some more control. Let's see if we can avoid these mountains. Let's go for a flat spot of land, huh? There we go. Now I can tell that it's no longer just falling, that I'm actually, e even though it's still decelerating, I can still, I can tell it's got the, the thrust of the engines is doing something. Yeah, I only put two engines on the thing just as a bare minimum. I just need, really, the those those engines, they've served two purposes. One, if I misjudge the launch and re-entry so that, um, if you know, in an emergency, I can get the thing back to land if I'm coming down over ocean. And two, as I'm about to demonstrate, to give it some power uh, to keep forward airspeed up in order to have a more finely controlled landing. So I tried making this thing just a glider, and it just, um, it, it's too heavy for the landing gear that I have, even with this cobweb of, of he medium strength and heavy strength struts. Uh, it just, things kept breaking in half with doing an unpowered gliding landing. Let's put that landing gear out right now. I would like to have the larger, like, bogey-type landing gear in order to spread some of the, the weight out over a larger area. I believe that would help a great deal. slightly nervous now after talking up this this uh, landing hat you know, maybe I'm gonna screw it up but I don't know it'll be funny yeah Harv heard me say that Sally heard me say that again the smiling guy in the middle is that the pilot maybe maybe Herbert's the pilot and honestly this vehicle it does handle kind of nice at the moment um, I mean yeah it's it's large enough that it's sluggish the wingspan it gives it a great deal of adverse yaw which I'm kind of really missing well, I suppose I could still just use keyboard and rudder pedals I hadn't thought of that maybe I should do that because I'm kind of missing a bunch of the rudder authority I, I, I should try that no no reason because I'm just because I, my joystick is acting up no reason I can't still use my rudder pedals Okay, throttle back a little bit more. I'm gonna try for a three-point landing because that's where we run into trouble, troubles if it's, it contacts in either the forward or the rear 
and the other end slams down into the ground. So in order to do that, I need to adjust the throttle and the trim in such a, a wings as to keep the, I'm looking here, keep the nose just barely above the horizon and keep the, the rate of descent below five meters per second. And just take the time. Not, that's the thing. I've, I've seen some other people, like some other videos of, of uh, people playing various kinds of flight sims, and uh, lots of people like to try to rush the landing. Uh, and if you're, you're not landing on an aircraft carrier, there's really no reason to do that. Really, just, just take your time and set it up right. Get a little bit slow. Previous testing, the thing worked per... Worked well at about 70 meters per second. Still got the descent going. No hurry at all. No hurry at all. Okay, throttle back a little bit as we're losing our rate of descent. And nose is pitching up a little bit. Just that trim, just one tiny little notch. Good, I like this. I like this radio descent right here. This thing is, is so delicate upon landing that I wouldn't even want to have a runway if there was one over here. I'd want like the big desert salt flats. Just give me miles and miles and miles of open land, you know? Okay. Okay, let's not do anything drastic. Let's just maintain this angle of attack, maintain this rate of descent. Not do anything different and wait for it to contact the ground. Excuse me, tree. Okay, kill the engine. Kill the trim. Do not hit the brakes because it'll dig the, the wheels into the ground. I'm just going to uh, wait for it to roll for a while. It's going to slow down. Once it gets down there, say about 30 meters per second, then we'll start very, very gently hitting the brakes. I wish I had thrust reversers in the engines. That would, that would be very nice. Okay, tapping on the brakes a little bit. Oop, hitting some bumps. Okay, almost stopped, almost, almost, almost... Stopped! Let's kill the engine. Okay! There we are. Uh, grunt. It, it lifted uh, a, a mass of 45 KMUs into, uh, into the ascent profile that I want. It landed safely. This is a, a functional operational vehicle. I do hereby dub the Grunt 45, as it's been tested with that particular mass. Uh, except this, uh, this will be the Grunt 45B. Because, you know, the original, it's, it's as strong. This is a, a superior vehicle to the original Grunt 45. Grunt 45 Bravo. I'm happy with it. No, okay, so the next step, we're going to take Grunt 45 Bravo, and we're going to rebuild it. I'm going to have to put the the actual prospector vehicle on there. It's going to be a good time. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> 